Hello everyone and welcome to my final recording of the day. This is four recordings for one day, which is not bad for me. <laughs> but this seems to be a lot easier to record and set up over at TWE. Of course, we're still waiting for TWE 2020 to get the full release. And when it does, it will return to my channel. But we're going to try and get as many of these episodes done as we can. And tonight's card has been changed a bit as though we've decided to put Ken Shamrock. Um, the reason for this is he is, as you can see... At the moment, middle-level regional, so he is quite popular, whereas the two people we were going to have in there, they are quite prop popular in the sense of, yeah, they could have done the match, but, you know, low-level regional, he is mid, you know, he is mid-level. So he is the main event guy tonight. <clears throat> so your main event tonight is Man, Man by Yadamina taking on Ken Shamrock. We've got no prelim fights for this, but we have... Now, more or less, set up the card for our first thing. We've not set up the card for our show in September yet, but we'll get to that. That will feature Naki taking on Shamrock and stuff, but we'll, for the title, that's going to be a good match to look out for. But the pre-show analysis of AFLWC of a war being held in Nevada is the third AFL show of 1994. We're due to have eight main fights and no primaries at all. Our main event is Mumbai Yadima taking on Ken Shamrock is an AFL open fight. Other things to watch out for include Mano Basmina versus Kenja Kajara. 27-year-old Roy Gracie, who got a narrow win over... <coughs> Wednesday Gracie at AF December last time out. 22 year Remco Gracie powered of fights for the first time since AFL December Rush Mission win over Satya Homa. And the 25 of James Matthews fights for the first time since losing to Ken Shamrock by submission AFL December to Rush. So Shamrock's main event AFL, AFL show for the third time. Yadama submitted three of his last opponents. This is the first time these two have fought. Yadama enjoy a significant rate advantage. The betting side have Shamrock as a favourite by a large margin. I forgot to take down the 10 count bit. And the other bit about the judges. Oh dear. Oh well. I can't change it now, so I'm going to close that down, and we're going to get on with the show. So our first match is Frank Hammer, Ham Hamaka versus Tessia Ondo, and of course, because of me recently changing the thing and booking this before the changes, it means that the rules, old rules, still stand. The new rules will come into effect at the next event. I think it will be the event after that. I think it'll be the June event, and then of course September event. We're in April. 1.5. This is a brilliant game. Our okay, cage so judges are Leo Masters, Cliff Robinson, and Ray Russell and Montoya. Hammock is much larger fighter with estimate. He must have 75 OSB at least on Ondoy that could produce anything as a fight unfolds. And here we go. Right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. I'm just going to have a quick look for something. Hold on. Uh, all the way. HD. Now we'll do it in a minute. I can't spell help. I want to do. I'm going to watch something here with my missus. So we'll do that in a bit. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are underway. The Foo Fighters engage. Andu uses a left jab, but finds out his right cross blocked. Hammock hits a two-punch two, a two punch combination, a quick left and a straight right. Both fights me in the mish. So we've got Shambo versus Wrestling here tonight. Hammock dodges a right hand and then counterattacks with a quick left hook. The two combatants meet in the centre and start a strike. Andu misses a right cross and leads him over to the counter. Hammock attacks with a right cross. There's an exchange of strikes at a relatively close range, but nothing really lands. The two fighters... Engage. Andu misses a right cross that leaves him with an open counter. Hammock comes in with a jab and a right hook right is ducked. They engage in the centre. Andu misses a right cross that leaves him open to a counter. Hammock attacks with a jab but a right hand that just misses. Andu comes forward and the two fighters start trading blows. Hammock manages a counter jab and one two Fandu fails to land. They come together and strike. Hammock slips past the right hook and counters with a solid right. Uh, both fighters step in to strike. Um, Andu misses a right hook and leaves himself to be open, open and counter with a left. They come together and strike. Hammock slips past the right hook and attempts an attack with a left jab and a solid right hand. Hammock is still moving well, but he's, de he's diff definitely breathing a little deeper now. Andu comes forward. Hammock hits two left hands on the counter. A one-two Fandu fails to land. A two-fighter engage. Andu misses a right hook and leaves himself open to the big counter of the left jab and right hook. We get past the halfway point of this round. 
And they engage in the centre. Hannock slips past the right hook and counter with a jab and a right hook. Both fighters come together and strike. And do misses a right cross that leaves him right open to the counter. Hammock comes in with a jab and right cross. An exchange of blows comes and goes without either fighter really landing anything significant. And do moves forward, constantly trying to pressure Hammock into exchanging strikes. Hammock makes a hit to jab in exchange, and Andu throws a too quick punch but doesn't hit it with either. The two fighters come to forward and engage. And do misses a right hook and gets countered with a good right hook. Uh, Andu throws a two punch combo with Hammock, avoiding Hammock moves in the fast and shoots on Andu. Hammock has to take down Andu, pulls half guard. Hammock tends to pass half guard and gain a better position. He passes straight to the mount. Hammock fires away with rice but does a little way in the actual damage. Hammock tries to pound on Andu but none of the blows are with any degree of power. Hammock maintains control despite Andu trying to wriggle free. Hannett pounds away with rights but fails to land any significant blows. Hannett doesn't look look like he has much left in the tank. Oh dear. It's fine, you've only got another five minutes after this, mate. Um, Hannett maintains control despite Andy trying to wriggle free. Hannett tries to pound on Andy, but all the blows are completely dealt with. Uh, Andy tries to sweep from the bottom of the mount but gets rolled over, rolled, and Hannett has his back. Time expires and we come to the end of that fight, and I give that to Hannett. Um, in my opinion, Hannick, yeah, 21, hardly any defence here. He got that round, um, definitely, and the final round, the two fighters come in and engage. Andu is off for the target with a jab and connects with the right hand. Hannick lands a 1-2. Andu forces an exchange of strikes. Hannick hits her two left hands on the counter. A 1-2 from Andu fails to land. Andu is starting to slow down a touch, perhaps conserving a little energy. The coup combatants meet in the centre and start to strike. Um, Andu misses a right hook and gets counted with a left jab and a solid right. Andu rolls his shoulder and relieves a little bit of tension um, and then moves forward. Um, there's an exchange of strikes at relatively close range. Um... Nothing really happens. Andy comes forward to attack. Hammock lands on the two left hands in exchange. Andy throws a two punch combo, but Hammock avoids both. Um, oh, okay. They stand on train blows, but neither can land any damage. We go past the half point of this round. Both sides step in to strike. Andy buys a ferret and is left open. Hannock counters with a, with a right hand and a jab and a good right hook. Hannock looks very tired, but gets grabbed by Andu. Hannock is looking to muscle Andu back against the cage. Hammock, haymaker, hay, ha, haymaker, does it Andu strike with his back against the cage? I'm probably saying this wrong. Whichever version I say of this is gonna, someone's gonna be out. Nee, nee, nee. Haymaker smothers Andu against the cage and uses his dirty boxing skills to do his advantage. Andu gets caught with a knee to the inside of the thigh. Hannock looks like he's on the verge of extortion. extortion. Clinch, we have one minute in the round remaining. Hannock catches Andu with an elbow to the face from the clinch while he's pressed up against the cage. Andu gets caught with a knee to the side of the stomach. Hannock catches Andu with an elbow to the face from the clinch while pressed against the cage. Haymaker tries to use the dirty boxing. Well, this is going a bit easier. And um, be launched, Hannock to pins Andu up against the cage, and has a couple of nice right hands onto the side of the head. We use a time limit draw, and the fight is over. The decision now being announced. All judges will result in a favour. Haymaker, or Hammaker, and he wins from Netherland. Frank Hammaker wins by unanimous decision. A no unanimous decision in five of the round. The fight has been rated as average. Let's move on. Let's see what he has to say. He thanks all his sponsors, all his fans, and he celebrates winning his debut fight. <sighs> Well, it's good you're celebrating that. Um, <sighs> Grizzly Pedalo taking on uh, Moreiro Okoshai tonight. And pro record 9 to 6 and 1 0 here tonight. 22 years old versus 21 year old. It's going to be an interesting match. And we have Shane Rears, as your referee. Our cage side judges are Leo Masters, Clifford Robinson, and Russell Montoya. Oak is facing a major disadvantage in the fight. He's probably given up at least uh, 125. That may be decisive. And here we go. Oak throws a punch to Padley, but Padley avoids it. Padley sees the chance and shoots it on uh, in on Akaya. Padley gets a huge double leg takedown and gets side control off it. Padley attempts to Americana. Oak is on side control. Oak fights off the Americana attempt. Padley blocks. Ocean as he tries to transition to the guard. Pilo attempts to Kuminari Okoshi from the side control. The Kuminari is locked in tight enough that Ocean has to tap out. The winner by submission is Remco Padale pa Padalo, um, and he's 1 minute 36 of round 1. The fight is rain be as good. Well, that was a nice quick one.
My pro thanks all your supporters and for backing him, and he also thanks his family, friends, and supporters. Talking about causing such an upset, Ramico Pablo says that he's been labelled as a heavy underdog, hurt his pride, and helped him spur him on in the fight. Yeah, that is a massive upset, obviously. I've been getting the betting lines wrong. <laughs> obviously. But yeah, he wins that. Massive upset there tonight. Next up is Sheen Dugger Daff Duggerfree versus Fundus Lustus, 31 years old. No, laughing. This is their bait debut freestyle karate. So we're going to see what happens here tonight. Marcus Haynes is our referee. Our judges are Case Rider, Clifford Ramson, Russell Montoya, and Perry Bruce. Duggerfree is much larger fighter and estimate. He must have 30 LBs at least on Luster. That could prove sniffing as the fight unfolds. And here we go. The two fighters touch gloves and both fighters meet in the centre of the ring. Luster lands a draft jab and a right cross and Dugovic secure, secure, scores with a jab but lands but has a right hand blocked. Bloody visit pairs that Dugovic has suffered a large, glash, large gash above his eye. Dugovic comes forward to an attack. Luster hits a jab in exchange. Dugovic throws a two punch combo but Luster avoids. They stand on trade but all the shots are either off target or safely dealt with. And two fighters engage. Luster hits a left cross. Dugovic hits a left jab but has a right hook block. Luster forces an exchange of strikes. Dugovic throws a counter jab but doesn't connect. A left jab is wide from Luster but he hits Dugovic with a straight right. And the exchange strikes happens right in the centre of the cage but neither fighter lands anything good. The exchange strikes doesn't go anywhere. The two fighters come forward and engage. Luster misses a, misses a jab but lands a right hook. Dugovic finds a good angle and lands a nice 1 2. The two fighters engage. Luster finds a good angle and lands a nice 1 2. Dugovic lands a left jab and a right cross. The two fighters come forward and engage. Dugovic is off target with the left jab but connects with the right hand and Luster lands a left jab and a right cross. The two combines meet in the centre and start to strike. Luster dodges a right hand and counter attacks with a quick left jab and a solid right hand. Dugovic comes forward to attack. Um, comes forward to attack. Let me just check something. Sorry, guys. I've just remembered. I don't think that eh, anyone to... Um, forward to attack. Put Luster hits two left hands on the counter. One, two from Dugovic fails to land. The clock is stopped as the referee wants to check the cut on Dugovic. Let's check the cut, but he's happy. It does not present too much of a problem. Awesome. Raffi brings everyone to the centre and back on the way. Luster initiates an exchange of strikes. Luster lands a left hand and he catches Dugovic with a right hook. Dugovic comes in looking for the strike. Dugovic throws two quick punches but doesn't hit with either. We go past the halfway point of this round and Dugovic steps forward looking to strike. Luster hits two counter left hands. A jab lands from Dugovic but finds nothing but air with a big right. Both fighters step into strike and Dugovic misses a right cross but then leaves him open with the count onto the counter. And Luster attacks with a left jab and a right cross. They stand and trade in the centre of the cage but neither fighter gives or takes any real damage. They engage in the centre. Dugovic lands and hits a left jab but can't hit a right cross. Oh jeez. Excuse me a minute guys. And Luster hits a good right hand. Dugovic comes forward walking down Luster. Luster can't manage the counter jab and Dugovic throws a 1 2, but Luster was equal to it. Dugovic is throwing just a little bit and he starts to, as he starts to get in the gas tank a bit. A quick strange strike doesn't lead to anything. Help me, except me having a swig of my tea. Luster is starting to slow down the touch, perhaps conserving a little energy. Luster glances to the clock at the clock. Both fighters step into strike. Luster misses with a right hand and Dugovic. Doesn't connect with a left jab and also has a right hand absorbed on the glove. Lusa steps forward looking to strike. Dogafi lands a left hand in a left hand in the exchange. Lusa loses a left jab but misses with a vicious right hand. Both fighters come together and strike. Dogafi is a left jab but can't hit a right cross. Lusa lands a left jab and right cross. Both fighters step into strike. Lusa hits a left cross. Dogafi finds a way past his opponent and lands a sharp one two. There's an exchange strike. It's a relatively close one but nothing really lands. And once again, the, both the fighters meet in the centre. And Luster finds a way past his opponent's guard and lands a wall sharp 1 2. And then Dugafi doesn't connect with the left jab but nails a right cross. Dugafi starts bleeding again. A strike has reopened the cut above his eye. That's not good. Uh, and a strange strike happens right in the centre of the cage, but neither fight lands anything good. The time runs out on round one. Bleeding Dugafi is attended by the cut man between rounds. One last round, round two begins. Dugafi initiates an exchange of strikes. Luster lands with two left hands in exchange. Dugafi throws a two punch combo, but Luster avoids both. 
and it shows Trice does not produce any damage. They engage in the centre. Lusso slips right past the right hook and tempt and attacks with a left jab and a big round that just misses. Dovey comes forward walking Lusso. Lusso manages a counter jab. Dovey throws a quick one too, but doesn't he land either blow? Dovey's starting to have to push himself now in his corner. Respond by urging him on a little louder. Both fighters meet in the centre. Lusso dodges a right hand and counters quick with a left hook. Um, both fighters step in to strike. Luster misses a right hook and gets countered with a right hand that landed cleanly. We're now at the halfway point of the round. The two combatants meet in the centre. Start to strike. Neither fight lands as is trying to quick exchange. Luster has a right hand taken on the gloves. Dography misses a jab and also a right hook blonde. Luster appears to be feeling a little fatigued for the first time in his fight. His hands are just starting to lower just a fraction. Dovey stalls forward pressing Luster. Let's see, it's a counter left hand. A jab lands from Dugafy, but but finds nothing but but air with a big right. The two fighters come together with a strike, but it's really tentative. And nothing and nothing comes of it. Dugafy does not look like he has much left in the tank, and exchange strikes does not produce any damage. The end of the round is coming quick. There's an under a minute left. Both fighters meet in the center. Luster comes and counters a right hand with a solid right, and exchange strikes beef. Both fighters fail to land anything significant. The fighters look shattered, clinch up rather than try and move away. The Luster is trying to muscle Dugafy up against the cage. Dugafy ends up back against the cage. Luster is breathing very hard. The time was out, and the round is over, and so is the fight. The judges given their decision, which are about to be announced. All three judges have Luster down as the winner. The winner by now is the foodus a luster and there you go and this match has been rated as good okay well we're going to see what happens as the show rolls on here tonight the fight card as we know we're having a break and then we've got a big show in september where i will be redesigning the entire schedule so there'll be three shows following that and that's where all these people will be fine next up is the russian bear oleg tukatova competing against royce gracie from soviet russia taking on terence Cora. And it's the first time I think you appeared. Have you ever appeared for us? Let's go to fight history in a minute. So he was last time. His first match was a win against Sugiyo and Hoover in submission by knee bar, um, December '93, where in round one of two minutes fifteen. And you also got the win there as well. That's December rush. So we're going to get to see these guys again. John McCarthy with the referee. The judges for the battle are Clifford, Robinson, Royce Montoni and Perry Bruce. There's a big size driven in this fight. Tekka is probably at least 35 LB heavier. And that's a major disadvantage of Gross to try and overcome. And here we go. The clinch starts up jockeying for position. Gracie manages to aggressively get a good position in the clinch. Gracie manages to control Tekka up against the cage. With the cage tripping to over, Gracie looks for the trip takedown. Gracie can't get the trip down as... The Russian bear, bear t wrestles into his dominant position. Tova looks to take Justin down by setting up a judo throw. Tova uses her burb outside leg to trip, and Gracie gives up his back for the takedown. Gracie pins the tackle from applying a body triangle. Gracie tries to turn over and sweep Tova, but can't do it. Tova gets both hooks in now and is now in a really dominant position. Tova with both hooks finally in, fully in, tries to get the rear naked choke applied. Ooh. Gracie defends himself well against the choke, and Gracie struggles against Takovu but can't get himself free from the hooks. With both hooks in, therefore getting full control of the body, Tova tries to finish Gracie off with a rear naked choke. Gracie doesn't allow the arm to go under his chin. Gracie pounds away, but Gracie doesn't do much damage. Um, Takovu tries to pound on Gracie, but all the blows are completely dealt with. Gracie manages to pull three of the hooks, but still has Takativo on his back. Gracie is increasing trouble as Takativo he gets both hooks in. With both hooks in, Takativo tries to flatten Gracie out for the rear naked choke. Gracie once again defends against that choke again. Gracie manages to pull three of the hooks, but still has Takativo on his back. We go past the halfway point of this round. Takativo increases his control by getting both hooks in. Takativo pounds away with right hands, but doesn't get much damage. Gracie improves his chances of survival by breaking three of the hooks. Takativo says he gets, in, gets both hooks in and seems primed to finish. Takativo bounds away, but Gracie commonly deals with them. Gracie improves his chances of survival by breaking three of the hooks. Gracie is increasing trouble as Takativo gets both hooks in. Takativo unloads with some right hands, but Gracie deals with them comfortably. Gracie struggles against Takativo and manages to free himself from the hooks. Gracie is in huge trouble now as Takativo swiftly gets both hooks in. With both hooks in and therefore great control of the body, Takativo tries to finish Gracie off the rear naked choke. Gracie doesn't allow the arm to go under his chin. Can you just let the arm go under your chin, Gracie? Gracie tries to improve the chance of survival by breaking three of the hooks, but they're too tight. Um... Takatito with both hooks finally in tries to get a rear naked choke apply. Gracie gets flattened out with the rear naked choke and he has to tap. The sum by submission, the winner is Oleg Takativo Trovo. The Russian bear has beaten him in 8 minutes 38 of round 1. 
The fight has been rated as fantastic. Great. Well, at least we've got a fantastic fight again. Um, Mr. Ken Shamrock, can you do a fantastic fight in the main event for us, please? <laughs> Thank you. Let's move on. Uh, if Takativa fans fully sponsored voice, and he says that he is a tough fight and gives shows, shows respect to Royce Gracie. Uh, next up in the match, which we'll see Brett Vale fights Joe Sun. I like Joe Sun. He looks awesome. He looks absolutely terrifying. I do believe that's a UFC ring. Is there any other pictures of Joe Sun? I want to see. Uh, Joe. I know some people have more pictures and some don't. Uh, no. That's fine. Next up is a match in which Bet Vale fights Joe Sun. Joe Sun's got plus 950, minus 1200, so it's going to be an interesting fight. Shamer is the referee for the fight. Uh, the judges are Pei Bruce Lansdori and Laurie Masters. Vale is a much larger fight and estimates that he must be at 30 hours. It's Joe Sun that could bruce Smith for the fight on the road, and that is your opening battle. Joe Sun lands a left jab, but Vale avoids a big one. And let's try and see both fighters try fail to land anything so. Um, significant. Jason do. Okay. Vale hits a left jab and the scores are a right cross. Vale comes forward and the two fighters start trading blows. Jason throws a counter left but doesn't connect. Vale can't connect with his, with his setup strikes but then, then he lands a big right hand. Vale looks to pressure Jason stepping into the pocket. Vale can't hit a setup left jab but then he catches Jason with a crunching right hook. Um, Vale can't set up a left jab but then hits a nice straight right. Vale wants to grapple and appears willing to aggressively come come in to do so even if it means risking some strikes. Joe Sun is the left jab but Vale evades a big right punch. Uh, without taking too much damage Vale is able to clinch with Joe Sun. With Vale looks a trip for a trip takedown. Vale gets a takedown. Joe Sun pulls half guard. Vale looks to get past the half guard. Vale gains side control after getting his leg free from the half guard. Vale attempts an armbar. Vale gets an armbar fully applied and Joe Sun has to tap out. The winner by submission is Brett Bart Vale. Damn. I was hoping Joe Sun would win. The which result, Bay Vale defeat Joe Sun um, by submission of the armbar in 4 minutes, 424 round 1. The fight's been rated as good. Let's move on now to our semi main event of the evening. Oh no, it's not the semi main in the main event of the evening. Tell a lie, we've still got another three matches to go. The referee of this battle will be John McCarthy, the judge for the battle, Lance Dewey, Laurie Masters, and Clifford Robson. I forgot about David Levick versus Joey Math Josh Matthews here tonight. Levick Matthews is the referee, tells over Matthews as the referee gets the fight their instructions. The fight begins and Matthew comes in looking for the takedown. Matthew gets the takedown and Levick pulls guard and Matthews fires away with manages to connect with two or three heavy shots at rock. Levick Matthew pounds away with right hands and Levick is in big trouble. Matthew gets overexcited trying to finish the fight and leaves himself open to a big sweep. Levick scrambles for position. Matthew ends up having to pull half guard and losing out on the scramble. Levy's trying to get out of the half guard and into a better position. He poses control momentarily and scrambles begin. The scramble sees Levy up first, only to be grabbed in the waist slot from behind. Grabbing for Mary Vest turns Rice Levy to the ground. Levy finds himself unable to do anything at all. Matthews takes him down with impressive ease. Matthews takes back of back the back of Levick off the takedown and he tries to finish Levick off with an ear. They could choke the win. They could in deep and Levick has to tap out. Josh Matthews takes the win by submission. And the official result is Josh Matthews defeated David Levick's submission. Rene choking two minutes, what, 12 seconds of round one. The fight is being rated as great. Let's move on. We're into our semi main of the evening. Yep, here we are. This is Mario Batsima versus. I don't know what belt that is. I don't know whose belt that is. I mean, that might be Prankerus's because he works with them. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and he's tasted Kenji Kenji Kajigachi in the Elf Open Weight Division in the semi main tonight. Shane Riz is your referee for the fight. Our judges at K Shad are Lua Masters, Clifford Robson, and Roy Russell and Montoya. And Baseman is much taller than his opponent down over him. The referee gives him his instructions, and here we go. Baseman shoots shooting on Kejoya. He has a takedown. Kejoya pulls half guard. And Baseman begins trying to pass guard and get into a better position. Baseman gets past guard, but Kejoya stops him at half guard. Um, Pesman throws a few weak looking punches as he decides his next move. Bootsmate begins trying to get his leg through the half guard to get a better position. Bootsmate is too skillful for Kejoya passing half guard and gaining side control. Looking to catch his best moves and content, just throw a couple of punches to the body. Baseman begins trying to get himself into the mount. He can't get the mount as Kajur rolls away to stop it, but does take his back instead. Baseman pounds away, but is unable to land many clean shots. 
Kudrow is increasing trouble as Baseman gets both hooks in. Um, Baseman flans Kudrow out with the rear naked choke and deep and forces the tap. Oh, okay, we didn't see the submission. I must have clicked too quick. So, Mr. Bay says victory by way. Submission, official Rob Mose Bay's defeat. Kudrow, submission, rear naked choke and form is 31 of round one. The fight is rated as being great. Awesome. This show is going to be a bit... This is going to be the shortest episode ever. Thanks, everyone, connected to Russell Todo for helping him prepare for the fight. He sponsors us all in financially. Um... And then most of us says that he's, it was a tough fight and show you give a shout to Kenju, which is good. Next up is our biggest and our biggest star in all of the American Fighting League. And this is our main event of the evening as Mamba Yad faces the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. As you can see, 5961, um, 237 to 225, 642, 2 0. He hasn't lost a match yet. We're going to see what happens in this one. The referee is John McCarthy. The judge for the battle are Lloyd Masters, Cliff Ro Clifford Robinson, and Russell Montoya. And that's the opening bell. Ding, ding, ding. The fire's getting close and clinch. Shamrock seems to be the aggressor with the control of the clinch. Shamrock tries to complete a takedown. Yadamu can't stop the takedown and gives up side control. Shamrock begins trying to get himself into the mount. Shamrock is able to mount Yadamu this time around. Yadamu tries to move guard, but Shamrock doesn't allow it. Shamrock attempts to grab a leg and knee bar Yadamu. Yadamu stops Shamrock for hooking the leg. Shamrock blocks Yadamu as he tries to transition a guard. Shamrock tries to lock Yadamu into an arm triangle. Yadamu fights off the arm triangle attempt. Yadamu tries to move guard, but Shamrock doesn't allow it. Inside control, Shamrock catches his breath, content just to throw a couple of punches to the body. Yadamu tries to move guard, but Shamrock doesn't allow it. Shamrock tries to lock Yadamu in an arm triangle. Yadamu starts Shamrock from complying it. Yadamu tries to move guard, but Shamrock doesn't allow it. Shamrock tries to look, hook a leg and put a knee bar on Yadamu. His Shamrock falls back with the knee bar applied, fully extended out, and the leg, and Yadamu has to tap out. The winner by submission is the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. The official result, the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, defeats Mambai Yadamu in submission knee bar in full travel round one. And this is rated as average. Let's he's showing respect, can show praise Yadamu for his skill and toughness. Well, that's the end of that show, guys. We've got a 78 commercial rating, 73. Only 360, 25,000. Let's close this down. A 0 0.4 this time, which is not too bad. Ken Shamrock, Hoglug. We didn't get any knockouts in the night because we had no knockouts. We're going to leave that. So our biggest earner was Mumbai Malu Batsima. Oh, plus 9,600, which doesn't actually compute when you look at things. So we're going to have a quick look at some of the other shows just a moment ago. In the main event, AFL Ken Sharp beat Mumbai in the round one of the selection. Now, we've got No Remorse, which is happening it in all the way over in September. And at that show, I don't know if I can actually add a fight for September yet. No, I can't because um, the person I want is going to be absent. And I won't be able to do anything with them until they're back. But where is absences? Here it is. So once um, Ken Shamrock, um, I don't know where our champion is at the moment because he hasn't turned up for a while. Um, unless he's got a fight elsewhere booked, I don't know. But yeah, so let's have a look. Mm, Fanaki. Um, like his main event, next fight is Fedusa versus versus Fedusa Shuto Revolution in May. So that's why we can't book him. So until after that match, he's not going to be available, but he will be. I can promise you now, as soon as he's available, he'll be booked against Ken Shamrock at no remorse. Our next event is Making History, and we'll also have times of trouble. Of course, I'm not going to do them. That's episode what we're on, six, seven, eight. Jeez. But we're going to have a quick look at the cards. Shall we have a look at the cards? We're going to go on here and do it. So, no remorse. Um, nothing but for no remorse yet. Making history, of course. Our main event is going to be Milsu Smith versus Fabio Goodjill. George Rungford versus Kevin Rosser. Going to our crops. Trent Jenkins versus Ketsu Major. Jack Milligan versus Tello Tula. Alder Stays, Xavier versus Dupo Van Dieven. And Buster Rutten versus Jason DeLisi. And in Times of Trouble, that is your card for Times of Trouble, and that's the way it's going to stay. I'm not adding any matches to that card. And then everybody else, and then we'll sort no remorse out later on in the year. No sign of Dan Seven yet. When does Dan Seven... I swear he is, should have turned up by now. Um, in my last game, he was around by now. Let's have a look. Workers. Oh, yes, characters in it. They're not called workers in this because it's not. Uh, there's a lot of fighters, as you can see, are going to crop up over the time. Um, we want Dan. 
Because uh, I want him on as soon as that available. Is done. There he is, seven. This guy, the beast before now. So, born June, September. Okay, so he's not going to be available in time. But he'll be available about September. We'll make sure we sign him as soon as he gets out of the lurching area. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching all of this. And hopefully you're enjoying all this. Um, as much as I am enjoying booking these shows. And having a bit of fun with this game. I might not be the best, but, you know... I'm going to do four years and ten fights because he's our coin champion. I know he's going to be making a lot of money off us now being our champion. But, oh yeah, that's what I'm not going to give him 30,000 per fight. Not yet. We'll do 3,500 for that one. There we go. I'll do the rest off camera. But I do want to show... We'll do, oh, no, we'll do it on camera, actually. So you guys can see what I do. I do four years... We do a year. We do a year or three fights to start off with, and then if you prove yourself worthy, I offer you a bigger contract at the end of it, which will be a four-year contract plus ten fights. So you're guaranteed. So we're going to do four thousand eight hundred, one thousand eight hundred. Sorry. There you go. So that's that been sorted. Brett Vale um, will be retiring after his next fight. Okay, Brett Vale. I don't know. Um, if I've got you booked for anything, we commonly don't have any broadcasters. But yeah, so we're still low level regional, but you see 15.7% and it's going up. If that gets to 100, it will then will increase in size, which will be good. But later on, I want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you again real soon. And that will be probably be tomorrow when I record the next three episodes. We'll do Making Trouble, Times of Trouble, and No Remorse. But there's going to be some big things planned for No Remorse. So I thank you all for watching and I'll see you again real soon.